but I fully just passed out. Hi, and welcome to Acorn Knits. Thank you so much for joining me this week. My name's Natalia. I'm a knitter based in Sydney, Australia, and this is pretty much just my nook on the internet where I talk about all things knitting. So buckle up, buckaroos. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know what to say with these things. Regardless, let's get started. So I'll chat about my Moody Fairy shawl because I've finished section five and I'm finally on to section six, which is pretty much the last major section before you get to the very end. So as in like the last row, section seven is really minimal. It's um, very little knitting. So I feel like once I've finished section six, I'm pretty much there. So this is where I'm at with it. I did continue with the beige and the black. The, I keep saying beige and black. Beige and navy for this section. You can see. So now I'm onto this section here, which is actually, from looking at the pattern, a repeat of this. So I looked at the pattern closer, and with this stitch pattern, it does show you a close up of it. So it's sort of these slipped stitches that are going in a kind of X pattern. I've seen something similar actually on Fiber Tales podcast. I'm pretty sure the most recent one she put out, she talks about one of her designs that has that as a central theme down the middle. It's a, um, it's a pullover pattern and she has those sort of slipped stitches forming an X pattern in the middle. So I realized that's what this is. However, it's the same pattern as I had, as I just mentioned, with this. So I don't know how I so fundamentally mucked this up that it looks like this rather than the crosses. But now that I know that's what it's meant to look like, if I'm making a mistake, I can understand why. And I can also more visually understand what I need to be doing. So what I mean by that is, for instance, when I'm knitting um, a color work chart, when you get to a certain line and it's the start of a motif, sometimes it can be hard for me at least to remember like, okay, main color for one, five for the contrast, two main, and trying to remember that pattern just based off what you see on the chart. For me, it's a lot easier to visualize the motif in its whole and where the placement of those colors correlates to the whole image. I hope that's making sense, but it's the same with, um, with patterns as well. So when I understand what the overall um, design is meant to look like, it's easier for me to visualize what I should be doing. Sometimes if I read it on paper, it can be a little bit hard to like internalize those written instructions and how that works out practically. I wonder if anyone else has this issue because for me, that's a big one is sort of like just I don't know. Sometimes it's just a lot clearer when I can see an overall thing. So now that I understand what these little slip stitches have to be doing. So you've got the two slip stitches and then four knit stitches. I understand now with the cabling, those two slip stitches need to be going opposite directions to form that X shape. So I am feeling a lot more confident with what this is gonna look like now compared to what it looked like when I first did it, cause that was a mess. <laughs> um, but with that said, it's gonna take a really long time. And I know it's gonna be such a slog because at the moment I've got over 550 stitches on the needles. Actually, when I first cast this on, it was perfectly 554, which is the exact stitch, uh, stitch count that I needed. And there's something so satisfying about checking your stitch count, especially at something that high of a number, like 554, that's a big number. And there's easy ways for that to be, for there to be a discrepancy, but then to count it and to have that to the T is just like mm, something very satisfying about it. And I also think when I originally did this pattern here, I'm pretty sure my stitch count was off by maybe one or two stitches. Cause I feel like I remember having to randomly do an increase somewhere just cause I felt like that's what it needed. I didn't bother to even count the stitches. I was too lazy. And even at that time, I think it was maybe only about 200. So I was being pretty lazy, but um, clearly that random increase that I put in there at some point worked. So, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not looking forward to doing this um, section at all to do with the cabling, but I feel like I'm also, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and I'm getting so close and I just want this to be finished. So that is where it's at, my Moody Fairy. So it is so scrunched up on the needles. 
I cannot even imagine how big this thing is going to be once I finally bind off and have it off the needles. It is going to be massive. Got cats trying to come in. Which actually, speaking of which, I've talked about this being inspired by my rag dolls, who are a brother and sister. Their names are Kiki and Appa. Kiki's the girl and Appa's the boy. And they're both rag dolls, so they are scratching the door, so I'll go and grab them so you can meet them. So this is Kiki. Oh. And this nervous boy, this is Appa. So I think this could have a bit more white and beige in it to be a bit more ragdolly, but it was just inspired. And I actually ended up having a lot more yarn left over than I've expected because I've pretty much finished now with the navy and beige. And I mean, I don't have obviously, they're quite small now, the skeins, but I've got a lot left over. Oh, this one's got some stuff stuck to it. You know, it's a decent amount um, to compare like the white I've obviously used quite a bit and that's got this much left in it. So I'm thinking what I want to do with the leftover yarn because originally when I started knitting this I assumed that each 100 gram skein was going to be used in full and I didn't think I'd have anything left over. So I was watching Bull and Vine's most recent video and also Kristen if you're watching thank you so much for shouting me out you are too sweet seriously thank you so much uh, and for any viewers who've come to my channel from that video. Thanks so much for checking it out and I hope you like I hope you like my videos. But going back to that, so from watching that video with Kristen, um, she had her stripes pull over by Andrea Marion and I've seen it before and I do think it's such an adorable pattern. But then as I'm knitting, I'm sitting there watching the video knitting on this, looking at my leftover yarn and thinking, oh my god, that is gonna be the perfect project for using up my last bits of these these four colorways and I can probably throw in you know a, a few more fingering weight um, colorways as well just to sort of bulk it out because I don't know how much if that's gonna I don't think that's gonna be a sweater's quantity worth with what I'll have left over but we shall see we shall see this week I've actually thought ahead and got myself a glass of water because I feel like whenever I hear myself speaking back I can't tell if it's just having an Australian accent or if my voice actually is quite gravelly but <laughs> sometimes I feel like I sound like a two pack a day smoker when I'm speaking um, and I think it's just because I'm not used to talking for such an extended period of time. I'm naturally a very shy and like quiet person um, so to speak for like half an hour non-stop at a time is pretty unusual for me so I think my vocal cords are just not not used to it and, um, and so I sound pretty raspy pretty quickly so I thought this week I'd actually bring a glass of water with me. Maybe some tea next time. I love watching knitting podcasts where people are just like sipping their tea and, and knitting or whatever. So the next thing I'm working on is the set of style sweater for my father. And I officially have two sleeves done. So I am so happy. It's like, it's so close. It's so close. I can taste it. And it's just, I'm in that really final, that final section of it. However, it's the scary section now because now I'm going to, have to be cutting into the body to create the armholes for the sleeves. I'm going to have to be um, cutting away at the collar as well to create um, like the neckband to create the collar. However, I hit a tiny, tiny hiccup and that is on my second sleeve. I haven't 100% finished it. I need to do a bit more of these like um, pearl row, I guess, to help as like a reinforcement for when I steak, steak the armholes. But I ran out of yarn. I thought I would have just enough and I obviously didn't <laughs> um, so I was a little surprised because when I bought the yarn for this I knit um, for my dad the size medium slash large and I used the exact yarn that they recommended which was the Rawagan and I think for that size let's say it was eight balls I think it recommended and then for the main color and then for the contrast color they recommended I believe three balls of the contrast color but then in the next size up which was the large it said um, eight balls for the main color and four balls for the contrast color so I thought okay just in case I end up running over I'll order the quantity needed for the size up but it was the same quantity for the main color for both sizes both the medium large and the large so I thought okay 
eight balls should be plenty. I'll probably have a bit left over. But I didn't. I ran out. And sure, like it's right near the end here, but I still need to knit the collar in the main color. So I'm tossing up as to whether I knit the collar in the contrast color in that white or, or because I searched through my stash and I do have this fingering weight yarn left over from some socks I knit. So this one is the, I think it's the Zeylana Cozy Sock, I'm pretty sure. I think it's in the bubblegum colorway, which I mean, I don't know why they call this bubblegum. Blueberry, sure, but bubblegum, I mean, I don't know. I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to criticize people's yarn naming choices, but it is a bit of an odd one. Um, regardless, it pretty much is a perfect color match. So it's a little bit dustier, perhaps. It's a little less vivid, but if I'm just knitting it for the lining, um, where I'm gonna be using it for steaking, I don't think it matters. So it's whether I'll use it for the collar or not, or if I'll use the white. So seeing as dad already knows about the fact that I'm knitting him this, I will ask him what his preference is. Cause I think he does kind of like those contrasts, high contrast of like, you know, that sort of varsity look where it's got the white collar and then the white um, like wrists and stuff like that, but then a darker, but you know what I mean? Anyway, so very excited to have this pretty much done. The armholes, I think I'm a little less scared about. It's the collar that really freaks me out as to how that's gonna work. I think I saw a tutorial on YouTube that speaks a little bit about it. So I'm just gonna watch that really in depth. And I'm thinking I should probably knit up a swatch and just practice on that because it seems foolish to do it on the finished piece and make a mistake and then having to work that out. I think I'd rather work out the kinks on a swatch but I'm also really loath to knit swatches. So I think I need to go against my natural nature and just knit a damn swatch and do it on that because I will kick myself if I make a mistake on this one and ruin it because this has been months and months and months in the work. I would say, I think I started it maybe around February. So yeah, you know, three months or so knitting it, um, two, three months. So anyway, that's where my set of style sweater is at. Unfortunately, I haven't made any progress on my Stonecrop cardigan by Andrea Mowry simply because the needles still haven't shown up. Um, I mean, fair enough, I think they are coming from the UK and I think I paid something like two pounds postage. So <laughs> to expect them to show up in a week or so I think was pretty unrealistic. Um, but I would like them to arrive soon because I've just got it sitting here and I just wanna keep casting on more, I mean, not casting on, knitting more of it. Um, because it just is such a glorious, this Lana Gato yarn is just absolutely glorious and it's just so soft. I just want to knit more. I just want the needles to show up. So it's just been languishing in um, a little project bag um, until those needles show up. So I really hope they come quickly, but until then it's just going to have to wait. Ah, but what about me? I'm okay. I know I'm made from disgusting aluminium, but come on, 3.75 millimeters. It's exactly what you need. Do not wait for Addy. Addy will just disappoint you. Mm, I don't know. I mean, you're kind of gross and you just sort of freak me out. I don't really want to use you. Oh, come on. I'm not so bad. You could use me. Look, I'm the exact size you need. You don't need Addy. Come on. How about me? Mm, no, I'm okay, really. I think I'll just I'll just wait for the Addies. Um, I really like the stainless steel and the aluminium. Sorry, Birch, like it's nothing personal. It's just really gross, and I just think you're a bit weird. So I, yeah, I really don't want to use you. Sorry. So in the meantime, because I did want to break up a little bit between the Moody Fairy and the Set of Style sweater. See, I can hear my voice getting a little croaky. Let me know if it does sound croaky. I really don't know if it's just an Australian accent or if it's croaky. No, it's croaky. It's croaky. So in last week's video, I showed the honey clutch that I made by Petite Knit because I'd sewn the lining into it. And it just made me remember like, oh my gosh, that is such a fun pattern. And I should 100% cast that back on. So I've started one here. It's blowing out a little bit, but it's in this gorgeous little sky blue colorway. So it's a mix of the Le Petite Mohair by um, Bishop Bush in their light blue colorway, I believe. Um, I think that's just the name of it, or sky blue, something like that. 
and then this fingering weight yarn by Bellissimo. Uh, I'm not sure if this is an Australian only brand. I know it's made with Australian Merino. Um, it's milled in Italy, however, but I will link both of these below, which also speaking of which, anything I talk about ever, I've linked everything below. So um, if you have any questions about the yarns I'm talking about or patterns, or anything like that, just look below. I should have linked pretty much everything. And I try to put timestamps for the topics I'm talking about. So if you did want to know exactly what I'm referring to, like within which project, it should be pretty much straightforward below. Uh, so I'm holding those two together. So a fingering weight and a lace weight. And I only cast this on this morning. So obviously there's very little to show, but it's just double knitting at the moment for the base. So yeah. Because it's just, it was such a fun pattern and I think because I wasn't overly happy with the, the greyish colour that my last one turned out, I want something a bit more cheerful. Um, and I think especially as it's coming into winter, I don't usually knit with much colour at all, um, pretty much ever. I'm very much towards the neutral, so lots of creams, lots of browns, lots of, you know, whites, things like that. Grey, a lot of grey. Um, it's a little different with the set of style sweater that I'm knitting for my dad at the moment with the navy, but I wanted something kind of cheery that I could, you know, it would brighten the mood. At the moment, it's pretty gray and dreary out. We've had a really sudden cold snap, so I just wanted something that was a bit more, yeah, light and cheery. So this is definitely hitting the spot with that. And speaking of which, um, with my propensity to knit everything in neutrals, this is my, um, it's a novice cardigan by Petite Knit, and I've knit it in Rowan Kid Silk Haze, I think it's called. And it's held double. It was just there, whatever this natural, creamy, whitish kind of color is. And I made it cropped. So see if I can stand up. I made it cropped because um, I didn't like the full length version. And still yet to put buttons on. Let's be realistic. I don't think I'm ever going to put buttons on this. Uh, it was the first cardigan I knit and I really made the neck band way too tight, uh, the button band, sorry. So it really curls up at the bottom there. And so I think buttoning it would be a bit, a bit weird. So I think I'll just leave it as is. And it's kind of like almost like a bolero, I suppose. So no buttons needed. So that's pretty much all my knitting projects that I've had for the last week. I am sorry there's been a little bit of a delay. Um, I'll explain why when I'll chat about some life stuff. So for anyone who wants to stick around to listen, please do. And let's get into it. So the reason this video was a little bit delayed was last week I just started getting these really weird, I don't know if I'd call it allergies, but on my dad's side of the family, we suffer a lot with like sensitive eyes and getting really red eyes. And I, I kind of always have a bit of a redness to my eye. Um, it's a weird time of year to be getting allergies, so I don't even know if it's necessarily allergies because right now we're coming into winter. We're sort of at the tail end of autumn. But regardless, my eyes were really, really red, like bloodshot red. <laughs> like, <clears throat> couldn't, I couldn't be on camera. I, and I'm not good enough with makeup to be able to conceal it. And I think they'd probably just, it would irritate them more. So that was what caused a delay pretty much in me putting a video, or filming to even then put a video out. And then I had a horrible day a few days ago. I went out with my dad surfing and we had a really great time. Um, surprise, surprise, I do actually surf. I know I'm probably the palest person ever who surfs. Uh, I cover my body completely in sunscreen and wear a complete like neck to wrist to ankle wetsuit. So no sun will permeate my skin. <laughs> um, anyway, so we went out and it was just, I don't know what was with the water that day, but there was heaps of sand in it and it really got all through my hair. And I didn't bother washing it when I got home because we were going to go surfing the next day. And I really don't, I want to minimize how much I'm washing my hair, especially if it's not necessarily oily. So I didn't wash it and I just went to bed and it had already dried. And then in the middle of the night, a little grain of sand must have made its way from my scalp down and into this eye actually. And I woke about two in the morning and I could feel this grain of sand. 
So I'm trying to go into the bathroom and trying to wash it off under a faucet. I'm trying to like open the eye up and like put all these eye drops in to try and flush it out. I'm trying all these different things and nothing's working. And I just feel like I'm irritating the eye even more. It's getting so bloodshot, like really badly bloodshot. And it started to like kind of like the eyelid was puffing up and my whole eye around here was just looking really inflamed and angry. So I kind of gave up and I went back to bed. I've probably been trying for about an hour or two to try and get it out. So it's four in the morning, I go back to bed and I think, well, maybe if I try and sleep, it'll just naturally make its way out. So it gets to six in the morning when James is getting up to go to work and it's still there, I can still feel it. And I'm almost sort of like angry at this point, like angry at this grain of sand, like how can you better me? How dare you? <laughs> so he goes to the bathroom, he's having a shower, I come in and once again, trying to flush it out with all these eye drops, you know, try and get water through it, um, whatever I could to try and get it out. Um, and James is there and he goes, oh, you know, I've had this happen before and I found it really helpful if I kind of like moved my eye around so I could get the grain of sand to kind of shift around and come out. So I put all these eye drops in and I start moving my eye around and I start feeling awful, like really, really unwell. And so I sort of almost like a feeling of about to vomit, you know, that sort of feeling where your head goes almost, it feels like all the blood's drained from it. And, um, oh, cat fluff. <laughs> and so I, I sort of sat down and the next thing I knew, I woke up on the floor and James is over me and he's like, Natalia, are you okay? Like, I'm gonna call an ambulance. And I'm just there being like, no, no, don't, don't call an ambulance. <laughs> don't, fine. And he's like, no, 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 you're not fine. And he starts like going over my head being like, how many fingers do I have? How many fingers? How many? Tell me how many, how many? <laughs> uh, and I was fine, I was able to count them all, but I fully just passed out. And apparently what happened was I was like sitting on the toilet, like trying to then like just like stable myself. And then apparently I started like shaking and then just completely fell forward. And I smacked my face on our bathroom vanity and then kind of like fell into the corner. So I've got maybe like a tiny mark here left over. Luckily, there's no bad bruising. Um, otherwise, I think James probably wouldn't want to walk next to me in public <laughs> in case people got the wrong idea. But um, yeah, luckily nothing bruised, nothing, you know, nothing, it's fine. Like it's a little tender if I touch it around here and here. I somehow managed to get my shoulder in it. But um, yeah, I just fully fainted. Uh, it's not the first time I've fainted quite a few times. I never really considered myself a fainter, but now I can actually count on two hands the amount of times I've fainted, this being number seven. So it's actually been once a year since James and I have been together. Um, we've been together for four years and I've fainted once every year of that. So I guess I've got at least another 12 months till it happens again. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was my Friday. <laughs> and so he, um, he was able to work from home that day. Um, usually his work doesn't allow him to, but he just stayed with me just to check everything was all right. And, um, so yeah, I obviously didn't film that day either. <laughs> so I'm feeling a lot better. I went to the GP because I still felt like I could feel the sand in my eye and she did a full inspection and luckily it was, it had gone, but I think because of it being there, it had sort of lightly scratched the cornea and that's what I was feeling. So she just gave me some antibacterial ointment and, um, or antibiotic um, ointment and antibiotic eye drops and it feels totally back to normal. So I'm really glad that it, wasn't anything worse than that, but uh, I am definitely never, ever, ever going surfing again and not washing my hair before I go to bed if I have grains of sand in my hair. Um, so lesson learned the hard way, the really hard way. So anyway, that's some, some I guess the most exciting thing that's happened to me since uh, my last podcast. Aside from that, the only other thing was I... Um, <laughs> Not very exciting. I recently purchased a new pillow cover. The reason was I've had a silk one that I've had for ages and just over the time I think the kittens have kind of like got their claws in it when they're you know have been coming to wake me up in the morning and just over time the little claw marks have kind of worn away and it now looks like it's been attacked by a lion. So <laughs> I was holding on to it but it got to the point where I was like this is this is in tatters you need a new one. I was gonna make it but then I thought no nah, I I was doing some shopping in the city and I saw one that was like $30. It's not the highest quality silk, but it'll do. So a new silk pillowcase. So that's all the good stuff I've got to catch you up on this week. 
I hope by the next time we chat that the Addy 3.75 millimeter needles will have arrived. Fingers crossed because I really just want to keep doing, going on my stone crop cardigan. But failing that, maybe I'll cast on the stripes by Andrea Mari and just do that instead. Who knows? So thank you so much for joining me again and I hope to chat to you soon. Until then, have a wonderful week and I'll see you later. Bye.